So my co-op students and I have been making great progress on our animated music video, a robot-themed dystopian rock opera that we're hoping to release very soon and which we're very excited about. So we've been working on animating backgrounds and getting some cool stuff going, uh, little vignettes and scenes that we're going to be using in our video. This one behind here is called Steamworks, and it's one that I designed myself. I went through great effort to get all the little details as closely accurate as possible with shading and um, dials and all sorts of knobs. This is a fairly close representation of a scene from the classic 1927 sci-fi movie Metropolis, as you can see here. I've uh, duplicated a lot of the elements here, but the one thing I was really struggling with was how to get realistic looking steam working in Scratch. Well, after much fooling around, I actually did get it working. And as you can see here, release the steam. We've got something that's quite realistic here that I'm very proud of. So I wanted to do a little tutorial here on how I created the steam and how you can do similar steam and smoke effects and perhaps fog effects in your own projects. So this is the project file I was using for my experiments this week. There's not a whole lot to it. I've just drawn a very simple kind of house shape just to get a chimney that I can have shooting some smoke out. And here is the actual smoke. It's something related to what you would, in more sophisticated programs, consider like a particle effect. So I've got a particle here, which is just a little puff of smoke. It's quite small, and I've drawn it just using gradients. So I've got a circular dot here that I filled up with a circular gradient that goes from a gray to a transparent color. So it's just a little dot and just by repeating it over and over again we're gonna and fading it in and out we're going to end up creating a fairly realistic smoke effect here. So uh, as you would probably guess we're gonna start cloning this object. So let's start by moving it to the location where we want our smoke to start. I'm just gonna put it right here underneath the chimney and then we are going to click the green flag and send it to the back so that it's behind everything else and appears to actually be growing out of the chimney. So in a little bit, I'm gonna start creating a whole bunch of clones here, but for now, I'm just gonna create one clone so we can kind of see a little microcosm of what we're building here and see the lifespan of one particle as it moves up the screen. So we're gonna, when I start the clone here, we need, to, first of all, to get this into a numbered loop, a repeat loop. We can't do this forever because we're concerned we're creating clones very, very quickly here, and we need to delete them before we hit that clone limit of 300 on our screen, which is just going to bug out and stop making clones after that point. So I went with a number of about 150, which represents something pretty close to the lifespan of one of these guys based on the parameters I've set. You might want to go with something a little bit different. So let's start by moving our puff of smoke up the screen here. We're going to add some randomness to its motion in a little bit. But for now, let's just go change Y by 2, which will just get it gently drifting up towards the sky. Just like that. There we go. It already looks a little bit smoke-like. Okay, so as it's going up here, we're gonna do a couple of things to it. Number one, we're going to increase its size just a little bit each time we come around this loop. So I'm gonna change size. Let's go to our looks commands here. And I'm gonna change size by five. Let's see what that's gonna look like. You can see it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it moves up the screen until it finally gets to the top there. All right. Next, we're also going to make it get a little bit more transparent as it moves up the screen. So we're going to change our ghost effect. By just a tiny little bit. It's going to pile up as we go along here. But right now, the number I picked was 0 0.15. After much playing around, let's see what that looks like. And so as it moves up, it gets a little bit more transparent until it gets to the top and it more or less fades away. 
So we do want to get rid of this clone. We don't want them piling up invisibly at the top of the screen. So once we exit this loop, I'm going to do a delete this clone and that will get rid of our guy. You'll see based on the timing we've set up here, he disappears pretty much right away when he gets to the top there. Beautiful. Okay, now we want to add some randomness to the movement of these smoke puffs. So when I, right here in the change Y, I'm going to add a random number to change the Y by. So each time it comes around the loop, it's going to reassess its speed and come up with a speed between one and three. And you can see it's going to make the speed a little bit jerky as it's going up. Hard to really see with one of them, but as we do more of them, it's going to start to pile up. We want to do the same thing with the horizontal motion as well. So I'm going to go change Y, change X here right below the change Y. And I'm going to add a random number there as well. Now we, we want to go basically either to the left or to the right. The smoke is always going to go up, but the, but the left right motion, we're going to make a little bit more random. So let's go pick random from minus three to plus three. All right, let's see what that looks like now. And you can see our smoke puff is starting to do some more erratic behavior here. Now it's kind of floating around and doing some more or less random behaviors. Okay, so far so good. So uh, that is most of the code here. So at this point, what we can do is actually start creating clones. Now we want these clones to be created as quickly as humanly possible, um, as fast as Scratch can manage it anyway. So we won't be putting a delay in here. We're just gonna do a forever. Let's switch the background to, I have a beautiful little night sky background that I got from the default Scratch library. And that really makes the, um, the smoke come out when it's against a dark background here. Okay, let's click the green flag and watch the magic happen. Looking good already, it doesn't it? Now there's one little imperfection here you can see, which is that the smoke is kind of coming out the sides of the chimney instead of out the top here. That's a little difficult to do with these gradients here. So what we're going to do is make sure that the thing floats straight up for a little bit before it starts randomly going from side to side. So let's go add another loop to our code here before we set up this 150 loop. I'm just going to make sure that the smoke puff moves straight up before it starts moving sideways. So I'm just going to do uh, a motion of change Y by, let's say, 2 or something here for 10 times. And watch what happens when I restart my program now. You can see that now it's coming straight out of the chimney before it starts to spread out. Now this vertical column is a little bit too um, too high here so let's make it make that repeat loop a little lower so if I go to five for example or even three we just want to make sure that it's not leaking out the sides of the object here yeah actually I think five might be the better number here Yeah, and so now it really looks like it is being emitted straight out of the chimney. Beautiful. Now that smoke is looking a little thick here. So we're going to fix that up in part by setting an initial ghost value here. So let's go grab a set color effect block. We'll change that to ghost. And we'll set an initial ghost here of 50% and see how that affects our smoke. So you can see a little bit more transparency in the smoke here. You can start to see some of the stars around the edges. It's still quite thick though. So if you're looking for thinner smoke, we can go up with a higher number here. Let me show you what 70 looks like here. And you can see the smoke's a little bit wispier. We can actually see some of the stars behind here, especially near the top. It's very subtle. If we go up higher to 90 though, you'll see quite a dramatic difference. There we go. And now we just have the tiniest little wisp of smoke coming out of the top of our chimney here. Let's have a look at 80 just for curiosity's sake here. 
that's a pretty good value. It doesn't kind of billow out the way that we wanted. So it really depends on what kind of smoke it is you want to get going here. Let's go back to 50% for now though. Start belching out smoke quickly. Now another variable you can play around with here is the ghost effect transition. So this is the decay rate of the transparency. So the bigger this number is, the faster your smoke will dissipate and disappear into nothing. So uh, as I increase this number, let's, let's bring it all the way up to 0 0.5 here to show you what that does. And you can see that right away the smoke starts to decay before it gets too far up at all. It's about half, or sorry, yeah, about uh, 60, 70 pixels from the top of the screen before it almost completely disappears there. So you can play around uh, with that number and get the kind of smoke that you're looking for. So if we go even more than that, up to a one, for example, you see that our, again, our smoke really dissipates there. So it's mostly a matter of playing around with these values until you get the decay rate and the thickness of smoke that you want. So I was quite happy with around 0 0.5 here and with around 50%. I think that's lovely for this particular project. I went with different numbers for my Steamworks project, of course, because I wanted the smoke to go all the way to the top. So there's lots of other ways you can customize this. Uh, one thing I found that works really well is changing the brightness effect. So let's go ahead and set the brightness effect to 50 and have a look at what that does for our smoke here. Now we've got a much cheerier looking white smoke here, which is kind of cool. And we can go the other direction as well, of course. We can go to minus 50 and restart here. And you'll see that the smoke is very, very black here, almost invisible against this. Not that useful for this kind of nighttime backdrop, but if you were doing a daytime effect like this one, you can see how the dark smoke might work quite nicely for a building on fire or something. If you were doing flames, that black smoke might work quite nicely. I do like the cheerful white smoke though. And uh, again, it's just something that you can customize however you like. Another thing you could do is change the range of these random numbers. Looking at this X value, for example, if we change this all to positive numbers, like from one to three, you can see we create a little bit of a wind effect that blows our smoke off to the right. Or we could do the opposite just by changing both values to negative, just like that. Changing the Y value has some strange effects. If you make it uh, the numbers a lot slower, like we stick with just a one here for the Y value, you can see that the smoke decays much sooner and becomes kind of puffier around the smokestack. And if we go with a bigger number, let's say uh, six, you can see that we get a much wispier smoke stream that just goes up very, very uh, quickly into the air. So you can't get both. You can't get width and fast speed out of this because of the limitations of scratch. There's only so fast that you can create smoke puffs, of course. One last modification that can create some cool effects is changing the color of your particle, of course. So um, let's go back to the nighttime backdrop where we can see things a little more clearly. And so we can go ahead and change this uh, gradient to a red to transparent gradient, for example. Whoops make sure we're going to transparency there. Perfect. So let's see what that looks like now. Well, that's a little terrifying. So something a little more demonic there. Or we could go with a sickly green color as well. For something a little more kind of radioactive. Well, that has some potential as well, I think. So I'm sure there's all kinds of other ways you guys can play around with this to create smoke or fog or steam effects 
for your projects. I'd love to see what you do with this work, and if you do create something from this, please share it with me. I'm at Mr. Tomek on Scratch, and always happy to see your work. And if I really like it, I'll show it on next week's live stream. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this, and keep on scratching, everybody. This has been an excerpt from the Chromeworks Technology live stream. For more Scratch tips, tutorials, game reviews, and interviews, subscribe to this channel and make sure to tune in to our weekly live show, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube.